All right, y'all, I saw this the other day and I was like, yeah, we need to make another one of these videos. Last time, it was a week ago, we talked about the Sedins and the Kachuk brothers and I got a bunch of comments. People were agreeing, disagreeing, and you know, that's fine. We're all going to have our differing opinions based off of which teams we like the most. But today we are talking about yet another idea in the same vein. I saw this pop up on my Twitter feed and I almost, you know, the same reaction happened this time around. I was just kind of so befuddled as to how other perceptions were prevailing in the conversation that I was like, yeah, we need to talk about this. Again, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I was just very personally surprised to see the opposing opinion be as popular as it was. Maybe that's kind of ignorant of me, maybe I'm not really considering the magnitude of importance that these players are symbolizing to the fans of those teams, maybe I'm completely disregarding all of that. But today we're going over to a tweet that went kind of viral the other day on social media that sparked up yet another one of these conversations as to Vancouver Canucks players and Ottawa Senators guys. This was all started by Bodog. Yeah, the betting site. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. If I was, you would know about it. But Bodog made a tweet the other day that went pretty viral in terms of other people assessing what it is they have to say. They tweeted out a graphic of their best NHL forward tiers. Do you agree with our rankings heading into next season? And essentially, it had themselves a list of five tiers. And within these five tiers are different players with headshots. It's a pretty good graphic based off of the information they're trying to provide. Let's go through the tiers one by one, shall we? The first tier is Connor. And in the tier, it is only Connor McDavid. Maybe Connor Bedard could be here in a year, but who really knows? Underneath Connor McDavid, you have yourselves the A tier, with Dreisaitl, Pasternak, and Nathan McKinnon. Underneath them, the B tier, Matthew Kachuk, Nikita Kucherov, Jason Robertson, and Miko Rontanen. C tier, you have Brady Kachuk, Sidney Crosby, Mitch Marner, Jack Eichel, Jack Hughes, Kiro Kaprizov, and Austin Matthews. And then in the D tier, you have Ovechkin, Pedersen, Point, Hintz, Marshawn, Artemi Panarin, and Tage Thompson. Now, in the bottom left-hand corner of the graphic, you could see a bunch of guys that are all sort of clumped together. And this is where you had most of the replies, quote tweets, and ensuing conversations spark up. The first reply to this Bodog tweet is from Hughes for Norris. Guess what team they're a fan of. Having Brady Kachuk a tier above Elias Pettersson is the funniest thing I've ever seen. This has a hundred likes. He had another reply saying, this is quite possibly the worst ranking I've ever seen. You can see the 120 quote tweets and a lot of them have some sort of a similar phrasing to it. Oh, how is X player over Y player? How is that guy over this other guy? And then you had yourselves AJ on Twitter, who tweeted this out. This individual tweet got 141,000 views and 277 likes. I love Brady Kachuk, but putting him above Pedersen is an absolute howler. One of the replies says this, Elias can score, but so can Brady. Not to mention, he brings more to the game than Elias does. Just ask any defenseman he plays against. The reply further says Elias Pettersson is one of the best two-way forwards in the game and is also an excellent progressive passer and skater, so while he doesn't throw hits, it's not fair to say his game is one-dimensional. Brady is probably scarier to play against from a physical perspective, though. You also had more quote tweets like this one. From a guy whose username suggests that he is a Flames fan, people are really saying they would rather have Brady Kachuk over Elias Pettersson? Sens fans, are you delusional? And then attached is a picture of the points they produced this previous year. Pettersson, 24 years old, had 102 points in 80 games. Brady Kachuk, at 23 years old, had 83 points in 82 games. The first two replies say this, I'd take Brady. The next reply says, I would take Brady too. Petey is overrated. Furthermore, this other user says Brady is going for a 90 plus point year. He also provides way more than just points. I would take Brady just because it's harder to find a Brady type power forward than a scorer. Elias Pettersson gets more points, but Brady has a better 200 foot game, hits, fights, motivates his team, and is overall a better leader hands down. 
And this is where I want to address some of the PD disrespect, man. Like, we've acknowledged here that Brady Kachuk has a really good physical element that Elias Pettersson just does not have. But to say that Brady is a better 200-foot player, to say that the magnitude of how good he is going to get outweighs what Pettersson is going to be able to become, I feel like you're giving the benefits to one player without really acknowledging just those same qualities in the other guy. Because when it comes to points and production, okay, Pedersen is going to have Brady beat. He had him beat this previous season. I would probably go out there and say he beats him next season unless Brady Kachuk really becomes Matthew 2.0. But when I think about these two players, Elias Pedersen is in a lot more of that Datsuk mold for me. His two-way game is impeccable. He's always back-checking. They played him on the PK for a reason. He led the league in shorthanded points. He was a beast defensively this previous year. His 200-foot game is unmatched, and he was one of the top players in the NHL for forwards and blocked shots. Like, you don't see that that out of many guys that happen to be 100 point scores. Sure, Austin Matthews did the same thing, but Austin Matthews is Austin Matthews. He is regarded generally as one of the top players in the world. Pedersen is really careful in the offensive zone. The way he's able to create offense, he's able to do things that not a lot of people on this planet are capable of doing. And the highlight reel plays just show the mind this guy has for playing the game of hockey. Brady Kachuk, in my mind, is a lot more of a power forward wrecking ball type, and that's not a bad thing. It's served him very well his entire career, and I won't doubt that it will continue to do so. I'll acknowledge that he has a good defensive presence because teams fear what this guy is able to do to them in the corners, stuff like that. But to say definitively that Brady's two-way game is 100% head over heels better than Pedersen's is really disrespecting the body of work that Pedersen put in this previous season. You also have yourselves the idea that says that Brady Kachuk is going to get better. Well, guess what? Petey's 24 years old, he's going to get better too. These guys were drafted one year apart, Pedersen 2017, Brady 2018. If you're going to go out there and say, oh yeah, well, Brady's still young, he can go out there and become better, Petey can too. They're both literally in the same age range. So anything Brady is going to improve upon, Petey probably has the capacity on doing so too. Not to mention the fact that Pedersen's a center, Brady is a winger, there's a lot more differentiation there, and it's been that way since the beginning of the forward position in hockey. And so for Bodog initially to have Brady Kachuk over Petey in this ranking, what they're very much valuing here is hits. They're valuing physicality. And I'm not too sure if their very beginning tweet of forward tiers is encapsulated through the means of a fantasy perspective. Like, maybe they're going out there and say, all right, well, hits and penalty minutes and stuff like that, these count towards what we're evaluating for forward tiers. And as a result, you got guys like Matthew Kachuk, who is in the B tier, and Brady Kachuk, who's in the C tier. Like, that would make sense if you're talking about it from that perspective. But then again, if fantasy is the perspective you're coming from, block shots should also go out there and contribute. And Pedersen was one of the top block shots players in the league for forwards. So having him in the D tier at 100 something points, it feels odd considering the guys who are on top of him and the ensuing discourse as to whether or not this is a good or a bad ranking kind of sparked this idea in the first place because a lot of Canucks fans are going out there defending their guy. A lot of Sens fans and non-Sens fans are saying the opposite. It's kind of an ensuing thing. And so my question to you here is, what are the tiers? What is the ranking of Pedersen versus Brady? Would you rather have PD? Would you rather have Brady? NHL, would you rather? This is why I titled it this way. The comments on the Sedins and Kachuk thing were pretty good, so I'm hoping for a good reception on this one as well, just because I know there are a lot of Sens and Canucks fans that will feel very, very passionate about this. Also, one more thing regarding the Bodog list. Sens fans, is it intriguing to you how Tim Stutzla is not on this list? If you're talking about young guys who can make an impact, playmakers, just great scorers out there, Timmy Stu not being here kind of irks me as well. I know I've been kind of antagonizing the Sens fan base for feeling they'd rather have Brady over Petey in this video, but... I'm not all that bad, I think, at the very least, right? So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Pedersen versus Brady Kachuk. What are your opinions on the rankings? What are your opinions on the tiers? And how do you feel about Tim Stutzla not being on this list as well? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Charles 99. And bye.